Welcome to Electron Online, and here we have an interesting example. We have a beam of light traveling through the air, hitting a glass prism. Index of refraction is 1.56. Notice that the angle at the top is 10 degrees. The beam enters the prism, will go through the prism to the other side, refract across the other boundary. At that point, the refracted light will hit a mirror and be reflected away from the mirror. And the question is, what is the final direction of the, ref of the reflected beam? And no, if it goes back to the prism, we don't have to calculate that part of the problem. Let's just go through one direction only and reflection out of the mirror and figure out what is the final direction of that beam. So the first thing that happens here is we have a, a beam of light going across a boundary from air to glass with an index of refraction of 1 and 1.56. The question is, what happens across that boundary? It turns out, nothing at all. The beam will just go straight across. The question is, why does it do that? Why doesn't it bend across that boundary? Because the index of refraction are different. Well, let's take a look at Snell's law. Snell's law says that n1 sine of theta sub 1 equals n2 sine of theta sub 2. And we want to know what the refracted angle is. And of course, assuming then that the beam comes in perpendicular to the surface. All right. So solving for, for theta sub 2, so we have sine of theta sub 2 is equal to n1 sine of theta 1 divided by n sub 2. I turn the equation around, divide both sides by n sub 2. And now I solve for theta sub 2. So we have theta sub 2 is equal to uh, the arc sine. Go. Equal to the arc sine of what that quantity is, n1 times the sine of theta sub 1 divided by n2. All right, so theta sub 2 is equal to the arc sine of n sub 1. That's where we came from. That would be 1. The sine of theta sub 1. Well, theta sub 1 is, well, that's the angle relative to the normal. And since the normal and the beam are parallel to each other, the angle between them is zero, so that means the sine of zero. Sine of zero degrees divided by n sub two, which is 1.56. But the sine of zero, that is zero, and the arc sine of zero is, you guessed it, zero, so theta sub two is zero as well, meaning there's no refracted angle. It simply goes straight across the boundary, unchanged to the other boundary like that. All right, so now we have a second boundary. So let's say now we go from 3 to 4. So from 3 to 4, so now the index of refraction on the inside, that would be n sub 3 is equal to 1.56, and, the, and the, the index of refraction on the other side is equal to 1 because now we go from glass to air. So what will be the direction of the refracted beam on the other side? Well, we have a normal to the surface that is like this, and you can see now that there is indeed an angle between the incident beam and the normal to the surface, and that would have to be a 10 degree angle. So theta sub 3 is equal to 10 degrees because there's an apex angle here of 10 degrees. Notice that if this was a 0 degree angle, this would be 0. With a 10 degree slant, this will be 10 degrees. So we know that the angle of incidence is 10 degrees. What will be the angle of refraction? Well, since we go from a higher index refraction to a lower index refraction, it will bend away from the normal. So we expect the beam to travel something like this towards the mirror. And so now what is theta sub 4 equal to? All right, again, we're going to use Snell's law to figure that out. N3 sine of theta 3 is equal to N4 sine of theta sub 4. We're looking for theta sub 4. So the sine of theta sub 4 equals N3 sine of theta sub 3 divided by n sub 4. Again, I, I turn the equation around, divided both sides by n sub 4, so that theta sub 4 is equal to the arc sine of n3 sine of theta 3 divided by n sub 4. And if we plug in the values, what do we get? Sine of arc sine of n3, that would be on the inside, would be 1.56 times the sine of theta sub 3, and of course the angle, the incident angle is 10 degrees, sine of 10 degrees, divided by n sub 4, which is air, which is 1. And let's see what theta sub 4 is equal to in this case. So we have 10 degrees, take the sine of that, multiply that times 1.56, and take the arc sine of that, and we get 15.7 degrees. So theta sub 4 is 15.7 degrees, and that is relative to the normal. So theta sub 4, 15.7 degrees. But notice that the normal 
makes an angle of 10 degrees with the horizontal. So where's my red pen? Right here. Red pen. So we have the normal, it goes straight across like this. And we know that this angle here has to be 10 degrees. We know that theta sub 4 completely is 15.7 degrees, which means that this angle here is 5.7 degrees. All right, now, notice that we're going to draw the normal to the surface of the glass right here. That's the glass of the mirror. There's the normal. We know that the normal will be 10 degrees below the horizontal. So this would be the horizontal. We know that this here is 10 degrees. So what is the incident angle relative to normal on the, on the mirror right here? Well, if this is a 5.7 degree angle and these two lines are parallel, that means that this must also be a 5.7 degree angle because these are alternate interior angles. So this must be 5.7 degrees. Add to 10 degrees, that means the angle of incidence. So it would be theta of incidence is equal to 15.7 degrees. So that's the angle of incidence of the mirror, which means the angle of reflection. And let me use a different color, otherwise it gets really messy here. There we go. So that would be the, ref the reflected angle. So theta sub r for reflected angle must equal the theta of incidence. So that must also be 15.7 degrees. That's the reflected angle. All right, so what is the final direction of the reflected light? Well, we know that it's 15.7 degree, degrees below the normal to the mirror, but since the mirror is slanted 10 degrees from the vertical, that means the normal is slanted down 10 degrees from the horizontal. So if we add another 10 degrees to the 15.7, we get this angle. That means it's 25.7 degrees below the horizontal. So we can say that uh, theta below the horizontal is equal to the 10 degrees plus the 15.7 degrees, which is the reflected angle, 15.7 degrees, which is 25.7 degrees. So the final direction of the reflected beam of the mirror is 25.7 degrees below the uh, horizontal. Of course, we want to keep going. Now we can see what it does here, but no, we won't go that far. I think that's pretty good. If you understand how to do that, you have a pretty good understanding of how to deal with Snell's law and how to deal with the reflection of plane mirrors all in the same problem. That's how we do that.